the chosen one. It was said that you would destroy this sin, not join them. Bring balance to the force, not leave it in darkness. Stellaris Dev Diary 315 has dropped and the devs have got some massive changes coming to diplomacy and the way that vassals are taken, especially by AI empires. This should drastically reduce the amount of vassal spam we see out there in the galaxy and overall make Stellaris a more balanced experience. On top of that, we've also got some interesting information coming about a possible leader consolidation and trait rebalancing where the special resource traits are probably going to go the way of the dodo. Stick around for all of that and more. Let's dive in. Before we go any further into future changes coming to Stellaris, let's take a quick moment and discuss the 3.9.2 hotfix patch which dropped just a couple of days ago. There is a full list of patch notes in this dev diary, I'm not going to cover that. I am going to note, however, that the enmity tradition has not been touched whatsoever. That means there are no changes to the whopping plus 20% research and unity bonus you get per rival when winning a humiliation war. However, we could see it get fixed in the 3.9.3 patch, which is currently planned to come out in just a few weeks from now. And that is going to include more bug fixes as well as some diplomacy changes that the devs have pulled in. All right, let's talk diplomacy. A common complaint since the release of Overlord and the 3.3 Cepheus update is that the galaxy frequently degenerates into a handful of powerful vassal blocks and things like federations only form rarely. A significant cause of this was due to the willingness of AI empires to quickly diplomatically submit to more powerful empires even if the difference in power really wasn't all that high. This then led to a snowball effect as newly encountered empires would generally be less powerful than this already established block. The devs have made a few minor adjustments to AI acceptance in past releases, but they've now decided that they need a more impactful change to delay this sort of behavior. They do want these political formations to form, but it shouldn't be a fast and virtually guaranteed phenomenon. Trust enters stage left. Trust is an existing concept that grows over time between empires that have diplomatic ties. It grows up to a trust cap based primarily on the magnitude of those ties, but it is also affected by traditions and other sources of modifiers. Since the release of Federations and the 2.6 Vern update, envoys could be assigned to improve relations to waive most of the requirements for diplomatic pacts. This has now been largely shifted over to trust and having an embassy with the target or the diplomatic networking tradition. Here we can actually see that tradition. It is going to grant us still plus three unity per embassy, but on top of that, it will allow advanced diplomatic actions without needing an embassy. From a game design perspective here, I'm not entirely sure why these two are part of the same tradition. If you're getting plus three unity from an embassy, I assume you'll probably want to have an embassy with every empire you meet or at least all of the empires you want to be friends with. So why you'd want to do advanced diplomatic actions and not have an embassy, I don't quite understand. But maybe these two are meant to be uh, powers that are not used in tandem, though I really can't work out why. Let me know in the comments below if you have an idea here. The new requirements will change the initial flow of the game quite a bit. It will be harder to meet someone and then have a commercial pact, research agreement, etc after finishing first contact. But similarly, as a megacorp, it'll be rarer to encounter an AI empire that already has their fill of commercial pacts and refuses to enter any more. It does take a bit of getting to know one another before they're willing to entwine their economies or swear eternal allegiance. Here we can see that the form defensive pact action requires positive relations, which I think is the level just below the very top, the excellent level, or 20 trust. 
it also requires an embassy or the diplomatic networking tradition. This is going to really slow down the initial part of any single player campaign from a diplomatic perspective. I think this might make early wars more common and then as the galaxy gets to know each other, people will settle, or I should say, not everyone's people, the aliens of the galaxy, will settle into uh, more regular relationships with more pacts and, and more things like that. It does mean, however, that I think Megacorp is going to struggle a bit more. It's going to be much harder now to get a commercial pact going. It's going to take you longer than it used to. So you're not just running out there, or you're not only, I should say, running out there trying to find aliens. You then have to make really good friends with them. And speaking of Megacorps, you can get your hands on the Fantastic City Skylines bundle until October the 4th. You can grab this 22 item bundle for under 19 euros. Support charity and support this channel by following the link down below. And the devs are even showing off some preliminary patch notes for this 3.9.3. They're quite general, not overly specific, but it gives us a good idea of what is going to be changing with the balance in Stellaris. So they have, as we've talked about, rebalanced the requirements for diplomatic treaties to now require trust. Having less than 50 trust with an empire imposes a minus 100 acceptance to them becoming your subject or overlord. So having 50 trust or more will be essential to make another empire into your bitch. They have removed the ability to trade favors. I'm gonna read that one again for you, ladies and gentlemen. They have removed the ability to trade favors. That means that all of the favor-based shenanigans that we've done in the past are simply untenable and we will not be able to do them anymore. Gone are the days where we can get resources out of the AI empires by giving them favors we know they can't use. And that's, I think, a good thing, but also kind of sad. It was definitely fun to abuse the AI in that regard, though I am glad they're closing this possible loophole. Insulting someone will decrease their trust of your empire. The Intimidation Menace perk now allows you to ignore diplomatic requirements for proposing subjugation. So if you take the Become the Crisis Ascension perk and follow down the Crisis path, you can completely ignore these diplomatic requirements you are, we are talking about here. It sounds like other empires are going to be much more scared of you. There are some AI changes coming as well to, uh, to shore up this uh, diplomacy change. So the AI will no longer request to become the subject or overlord of another empire unless they have 50 trust with the other party. And I think that's both sides. So both the overlord and the vassal, potential vassal, the subject, must have 50 trust each. Otherwise, it's not going to happen. Certain AI personalities, that is Federation builders, spiritual seekers, migrating flocks, and peaceful traders, are now 25 times more likely to select the diplomacy tradition. This should mean we see, on top of the changes to the vassals, quite a few more federations naturally forming during the course of the game, which is definitely a plus. I think it'd be great to have more difference in the galaxy. At the moment, we tend to get a few blocks where there is an overlord and a bunch of vassals. Occasionally, those overlords form together in some ginormous federation, but that doesn't always happen. It will be nice for some more variety. I don't think I want to, or anyone really wants to, completely not see any uh, overlord subject relationships out there in the galaxy. But in this case, less would definitely be more from a Stellaris playthrough perspective. The AI will no longer request to be subjugated by empires that are equivalent or weaker than them. That's really important. It means you can no longer sneak in just because you're very good friends, a cheeky vassalization of a neighbor. And trust between nations is now visible in the main diplomatic screen, so it'll be quite easy from a UI perspective to see what's going on. So one of the changes we just discussed is a general diplomatic change. They've removed the ability to trivially trade favors between empires. The traditions related to them and the extort favors operation will be the most consistent source of favors going forwards. 
though in time the devs plan on adding various events that feel like they really should include a favor exchange this pass will not be complete however in 3.9.3 so the change to the trade that's coming but the new events it sounds like won't be there until probably 3.10 possibly later and if you're enjoying this video please trade favors with that like button one last time for those of you that love spreadsheets and tables here's a fantastic spreadsheet made by the devs to outline what is going to be happening with the various pacts what trust level or relations opinion you will need and what diplomatic requirements you will have in order to get it going you'll notice that basically all of them require you either have an embassy or have the diplomatic networking tradition some do require you to improve relations as well that's the first three non-aggressive pact guarantee independence and support independence you can do those very early on simply by sending an envoy in it looks like though the rest of them defensive pact all the way down to propose secret fealty require either an embassy or the diplomatic networking tradition interestingly you can get away with commercial pacts if you have the universal transactions ascension perk something else i want to draw your attention to is the monthly trust gain you get from these different pacts so a non-aggressive pact is one of the best ways early on you can do that relatively easily to gain trust with another empire you can upgrade that to a defensive pact that will take you from 0.5 monthly trust to 0.75 monthly trust a 50 percent increase and that means you'll get to 50 trust within only five or six years so if you can get a defensive pact up and running or even just a non-aggression pact you should be able to convince someone to become your vassal diplomatically assuming you are more powerful than them within six or seven years of meeting now whilst the devs are entirely correct that is not as instant as it used to be you used to just be able to do a bit of favor trading improve relations a little bit uh, send a pact or two and then blam you could bring someone who you'd met literally three months before in as a vassal now it will take a few years but that still does seem relatively quickly to me personally i think that it might be better if we double that cap on demand subjugation in terms of the trust you are required from 50 up to say 100 that would mean you need multiple pacts and it is going to take you some time to get to that high level you couldn't for example just do it with a measly non-aggression pact overall i think this new system is going to be much more enjoyable for people playing single player games it's going to mean the galaxy isn't so uniform very quickly that's generally what we're seeing is the same power blocks forming again and again and again it reminds me of cloud atlas but this is definitely a step in the right direction and these are my thoughts on the new changes to diplomacy please let me know your thoughts down in the comments below i'd actually love to hear from you do you think these changes are something the game needs have the devs gone too far or have they not gone far enough maybe this uh, porridge is just right let me know internal testing has shown that these changes are apparently very effective at reducing the vassalization blobs while still allowing them to form either over the long term or through the judicious application of violence remember though ladies and gentlemen violence is the last refuge of the incompetent subjugation war goals of course do not require trust that's why uh, that's why you can get vassal blobs with war this also gives a potentially interesting hook for the smear campaign operation when the devs revisit espionage sometime in the coming updates because of course smear campaign could be reducing trust thus breaking up or possibly forcing some vassals to want their independence or, or just preventing them from forming altogether interesting changes on the horizon though for sure the developers have also left us a fun hint for what's going to be featured in next week's dev diary where they'll be examining a potential 3.10 feature the leader consolidation and trait rebalancing from this clip here well there's a lot to see first off the private mines trait is no longer granting a straight up uh, minerals out of the ether 
from the leaders, that is definitely a good thing. Uh, leader traits providing resources is the single most broken thing currently in Stellaris, and almost every high-powered build relies on it early on because you get some insane resource production and you don't need any pops, you just get resources for nothing. This trait now, Private Minds, instead of granting plus 8 or plus 32 minerals, looks like it's going to be granting a planet-wide effect of plus 2 minor jobs. But there's more here than meets the eye. Some of you eagle-eyed amongst us will have noted that this governor is not a goddamn governor. They are, in fact, among us. No, they're a, they're a scientist. Have you noticed that? There's a scientist, and they are labelled as a governor. Now, you might remember way back... In Dev Diary 307, the developers talked about possibly reducing the number of leader classes from five down to three, and those classes being commanders, diplomats, and scientists. It's possible with this leader rework that scientists have taken over the role of both research and governance, and that's why we see a scientist here on the planet itself, or another alternative is that all of our leaders can now act as governors. So yes, you can have a commander commanding a fleet, but they can also have their own little provincial sector. Somewhat like the Roman political system 2000 years ago, where we had governors leading provinces, those governors could also raise armies, you could have proconsuls out in the field, but they might also have a governorship somewhere, although I might be mixing up my, uh, my titles, doesn't matter. The point is, Either, either we're getting scientists now taking the place of governors or something much more exciting, which is that individual planets could be in some ways owned or managed by any leader we have out there, which really is going to be really weird. And I'm, I'm concerned there definitely about how the traits might be balanced, but it could be very good to reduce the number of overall leaders we need if they've basically completely eliminated governors and made it so that all of our leaders now function like governors. I don't mean to sound like a broken record here, but please let me know what you think of this hint. I'm Maybe I've got the completely the wrong end of the stick. Maybe there's something you've noticed in this screenshot that I haven't. Let me know down in the comments below. Patch 3.9 has included a massive rework to the way that habitats now work in Stellaris. If you'd like to hear me go through all of the changes, click the video on screen now.